So yeah, I know you're all too tired. I mean, I'm, I will just quickly wrap up. <coughs> See, <coughs> I would be focusing on broadly uh, uh, two important activities that Awareness in Action has been engaged. So one of the issues that Awareness in Action has taken up about how do we think of, rethink about globalization, the question was very straightforward that there are people in 1990s, if you were there, you would uh, recognize that there is this ideological battle of whether globalization is good or bad. Today, nobody is even talking about those issues. So in a way, everyone understands that globalization is something that you have to live with. The question would be that if it is inevitable process, then what do we do with it? How do we make sure that you know it brings in some benefit? In one way, from if you if you have looked at the deliberations fr from the morning till now, you would understand globalization has created unforeseen kind of problems. Nobody would have thought creating a transportation facility would lead to any number of A to Z communicable diseases that they would land. Nobody would ever thought that some disease in some corner of you know Zambia, Zambia, I mean some corner of Africa would be a threat to India in the future. And whether you like it or not, yes, it is indeed a threat to us. Any new outbreak of any disease, name it, it's here. Now, it is also different kinds of problems. See, now plastic of some other country gets dumped it here. You know, you have all kind of poison. Subhu was showing, Subramanya was also showing that there are a number of plants which are nothing to do with India have landed in and killed the wild population here. There are fishes which have been threatening us. So our life have been altered in some way or the other with the phenomenon of globalization. Now the question in front of us was that globalization, if it is impacting us in this way, there are also good things. There are smart smartphone in our hand, we have technology, we have Skype, you know, you have all kind of medicine, multi-speciality hospital. Today you can think of people coming back out of the hospital after hemorrhage. I mean, all kind of good things have also happened. The question would be, how do we make sure that the good things are used in a much better way and the bad things are kept at an abeyance in such a way that people find happiness in this? This is the goal. In order to do this, we broke these impacts into, we had a serious deliberation one year back. We thought about it, the AIA, there is a team. See, there is, there is something which, which is very peculiar about our organization is that, that it's not an organization which carries expertise on so many things, but there are individual who are experts within the organization. They sat through, they, they debated about it. So we thought about five different domains, five important issues which affects our life on a daily basis. So we held series of seminar, bringing experts and various stakeholders together to talk about. And the first set of series began. In the first seminar, we thought about various dimension of economic aspects of the human life. Uh, how this economic aspect of the human life, including international trade, various international agreements, and then the local trade regulations, the business community, how does it affect our day-to-day -day affairs in the, in, the, in the way that we have not even imagined, we have not even thought of. So in that way, what do we do? How do we look at India in 2040? How do we think of economics? See, today everyone realizes that it is a bogus thing to talk about free trade. So there are different ways that we need to look at market, etc. So what should be the ways is something that we deliberated upon one day. There was another day, a second seminar was planned to look at how do we think of governance because half the questions that came today was about our systems are not working properly, people are negligent, you know, these are not reaching out to the last man. You know, these are the, these are the concerns of governance and administration. How do we visualize governance and administration? So we had all kinds of stakeholders. So there are IRS officers, there are IFS officers, there are IAS officers, and there are political people. All kinds of people came and shared the diaries and reflected about governance. We had a series of ideas around it. And as a part of it today, we thought about from morning climate change to environment to public health, a range of issues we deliberated. We are going to look at university education whether we like it or not, our education, our lives, our jobs, everything is dependent on universities and universities are at stake today. One side, our state universities are becoming completely useless and another side, the completely new kind of institutions have come which are highly competitive, exorbitant and the most people who cannot afford are the one who go to the most weak institutions. And the people who afford, can afford, pay high and go to the bigger institutions. So there is some kind of a gap that gets generated out of the policy paralysis and our negligence to reflect about 
uh, education, university education as such. So we are going to actually spend a day looking at how globalization has altered our university education landscape, starting from what kind of courses we learn in humanities and social sciences and other part, and how science and technology education has been completely, you know, kind of dictated by certain forces that we don't understand today. And how do we think about education after 20 years? And you can't allow education to be a free ride. It's a country where everyone, everyone deserves and everyone has a right to get appropriate kind of education. So we need to really reflect about it. We also have another issue, agriculture. So th there is a claim since independence that India is a land of agriculture, that there's 70% of the people. See, these lectures, we are tired of hearing this lecture. But what is happening to that sector, which also is associated with rural development, rural economy? See, because if, you go, if I go back to my own village where I was born and brought up and my life was shaped, today it looks like a, you know, Urdhashrava. You know, only old people live there. It's an unlivable place. There is something tremendously bad that is happening in the rural areas of our world. And this is nothing to do with one government or another government, one ideology over the other. This is a pressing problem. It is also related to globalization. So people in my village, for example, my classmates who were dropped out at 8th standard, 9th standard, 57 of them in the small village of mine are drivers in Bangalore and they earn much more money than my cousins who have 20 acres of land in the village. So this explains a lot to us in that sense, in order to reflect about how do we really rethink and rework on agriculture sector, which is sort of a center for our traditions and culture, our ways of living in this world. How do we think about it is another question that we are going to deliberate in the future. So what we intend to do is that we are going to put all of them together in the form of an edited volume, one of our colleague who is going to do that. And then we will actually sort of bring into different form of literature so that the young generation people can make use of it. And also we wanted to do big time. We wanted to get involved in advocacy of this. In this, though you, I am referring to we, I have a little role to play. There are a lot of volunteers who have been doing this job tirelessly, endlessly, and there are a lot of well wishes who have been doing it. This is one part. Another kind of activity which is very important for us, we are trying to rethink about how do we reconceptualize technology education landscape in India. So this industry institution partnership, eye to eye, is an important aspect where we have been looking. We did three seminars in the name of emerging technology in Hyderabad, where we discovered the tech, you know, internet of things, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, I mean, cloud computing, any of those domains. The industry is going in somewhere, our engineering colleges are in some corner. There is absolutely no relationship between the way industry exists and way our engineering colleges exist. Somehow we need to build this gap, which requires a lot of agencies to get involved. So we are now in a critical phase where we are working on the documents where we wanted to bring in AICTE, UGC, and other allied bodies and ask them the question. If you want to India to be the leader and, in, and to grow in the same way that we are growing as an economy, the question would be, that how are we going to realign our engineering education to pitch in a case where we can grow at 10% rate even at 2040? I mean, this is the question that we have. So in that, we have done a series of work workshops, seminars. We have brought in a lot of people. So in this, and we also have another idea which people have talked about. Uh, though are, those are not relevant, but I, I just emphasized what we are going to do in the future. These are our potential. Basically, we are an organization we are interested in bringing the expertise in the society, the potential of the activists and other people who are very active, conscious citizens in the society together and go and press with the public institutions, executing bodies and, and get appropriate information. Today, we live in the world of post-truth, alternative facts. We don't know what is truth. What is the appropriate information? Logic and reason are not necessary today to the public debate. Debate. If you look at NDTV, if you look at Republic TV, you know there is no debate at all. In that situation, we wanted to become a response on certain specific issues where we adhere to truth, we adhere to knowledge, and we use this knowledge which is available in our society, and we use it appropriately in a way that we could bring in transformation in the society. This is largely the set of activity which is going to decide our course, course of action. I have just outlined them. Thank you. I think I have overshot my limit. Thank you very much.